remain standing and join us in celebration as we sing the hymn of praise led by Dr. Benjamin Harlan, the dean of the School of Church Music, which will be followed by the invocation led by Takahiro Owe, a missionary to Tokyo, Japan, with the International Mission Board, whose son, Richard Owe, will receive his Master of Divinity with Biblical Languages degree today. Our Heavenly Father, as we have gathered together to mark this significant step in the lives of these graduates who have dedicated themselves to serving you in ministry, we give you thanks for this institution and her founders and supporters who made this occasion possible. 
We also remember the current staff and teachers who have worked so diligently by precept and example to prepare these chosen vessels of God. Lord, this is a time of celebration of achievements earned through patience and discipline by these individuals who are being recognized today. We thank you and ask you for your special blessing upon their spouses, family, and friends who sacrificed equally to bring about this joyous occasion. Thank you for using them to encourage, provide, and support during this difficult circumstances. We praise you, Lord, because in those trying times, you proved yourself to be a God who is faithful in keeping your promises. Also, during this period of preparation, you were working in the lives of these, your servants, to equip them to live victoriously as they face the spiritual battles that lie ahead. Now we ask you for your blessing upon this graduation exercise that it will truly be one that will glorify the Lord Jesus Christ in whose name we have gathered. May this not be a mere exercise nor formality, but a time of drawing near to you and a time of renewed commitment to the mandate to share Christ both at home and abroad. May you use these graduates to help fulfill your great commission to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. We again dedicate this service to you, Lord. Bless it and bring honor to your name. In the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. We're delighted to have you with us today. We want to begin by expressing our gratitude to Travis Avenue Baptist Church, their pastor, Michael Dean, who is one of our trustees for graciously allowing us to use this spacious sanctuary for this time of commissioning. We have special guests all around us, literally who have traveled from around the world for this event, and so I want to recognize some special guests by groups. So as you listen, I hope that as one of these may be touching your own life, that you would stand, and as the group stands, would you just remain standing until all of those that we're going to recognize are standing together. And so I think you'll get the gist as we move together. First of all, if we have any of our trustees present, trustees who help govern our institution, would you just stand, remain standing where you are? Uh, a husband or wife of a graduate, if you're a husband or wife of a graduate, would you stand right now and just remain standing? That's right, all over, just stay where you are. Now, children of a graduate, two-thirds of our students are married. Children, would you stand? Uh, some perhaps have stand with parents already. Parents or grandparents of a graduate, you've come, one of your uh, children, there we're going across the balcony, begin to look around, see what uh, God is doing here. Uh, other relatives, uh, you may be in-law, outlaw, uh, aunts, uncles, you stand as well. If you're a church member and you participated by prayers and fellowship, would you stand as well? If you're a church member of one of the graduates. Now, if we haven't gotten you and you're a friend of one of the graduates, would you stand? Now, what I want you to do is notice this as a total family effort. So I'm going to ask the graduates and faculty, would you give these folks a round of applause? Thank you. You may be seated. We simply wanted in a very simple way to say to you how much we appreciate what you have done in terms of prayer, in terms of your support. So many of you are from our Southern Baptist churches, as we are indeed a Southern Baptist church. Uh, convention entity, and we want you to go home and thank those folks again for the cooperative program. I can say on behalf of our students, they do. About 40% of their tuition is paid by our cooperative program. We could not do what we do for them if it were not for you folks. We appreciate that so much. So many donors who have been generous through the years in student aid and many other ways, and so we want to tell you thanks. Thank you for this very special day. Before the commencement address, the Southwestern Singers going to bless us through music, but before they come, we're going to focus together today on the powerful Word of God as Paul Jones, the Christian Action Commission of the Mississippi Baptist Convention, leads us in reading responsively from Romans and Matthew. His son, Paul Jones III, will receive the Master of Arts in Christian Education degree. As you look at your program, would you join us in reading the Word of God? 
Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age.
Amen. Thank you, Southwestern singers. Well, we come to this very critical time. Commencement, sometimes we call it, commencing with ministry. Most of you have already been involved in ministry throughout your time here at Southwestern. Commissioning service as we send you forth from this place under the authority of a holy God to teach and preach the Word of God. I want to draw your attention for a few moments to uh, the first epistle of Peter as I challenge you today. As you may recall, Peter begins this letter, this epistle with a reminder of the wonderful salvation and our sure and living hope. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who according to His great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the dead to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. For you who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed the last time. In this, you greatly rejoice, even though now perhaps for a little while, if necessary, you've been distressed by various trials, that the proof of your faith, being more precious then gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in the praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As Peter begins this letter, he reminds those suffering pilgrims of that day that if they would continue their focus on the hope that had brought them here, on that high calling of redemption and salvation, that these truths are unshakable no matter what the circumstances we encounter. I'm sure that some of you guests today, friends, relatives, grandparents, may have thought three or four years ago or perhaps more that when your friend and when your graduate of today came to you and said, listen, I believe God's calling me to, to full-time Christian vocation. I'm headed off to seminary to prepare for the train. Some of you probably thought they had dropped off the side of the earth, wondering why, what possibly could have motivated my child who graduated magna cum laude from college got all the world in front of them. They're going to serve somewhere in the remote part of the world. What in the world could have possessed them? And the answer to that question is this hope of God's redemption. You see, the reality is when we come to know Christ as personal Savior, that experience which transforms our own life, then it begins to place that burning and eager desire within our heart to, to declare that. And God calls out some in a unique and special way to declare that good news around the world. And so, whatever you may have thought at that time, I want to affirm and reassure to you that this calling which has been placed upon these young men and women is of the highest order. It's going to touch the world. It's going to impact eternity. And one of the things they would want you to know today is that this calling comes from the redemption they have found in Christ Jesus. And their heart's desire, many of them, have been praying that this day would be a day of encounter for some of you. For some of you who do not know Christ as Savior, who have not experienced this great hope and this great redemption, that even in this experience today, you might see the depth of God's calling upon their life. In light of these ultimate challenges, then Peter gives to them a stirring challenge, which I want to give to you today. And I want to list it simply in what I call the five keys to successful ministry. You know, I, I see conferences all the time, people talking about how can you have a success in ministry. And it seems to me so obvious from this text that I'll simply read to you a few verses and perhaps outline them. And you might want to uh, remember these as you go wherever God has called you. Therefore, he says, verse 13, gird your minds for action. Keep sober in the spirit. Fixed your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to your former lust, which were yours in your ignorance, but like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior. Because it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy." If you address as the Father, the one who impartially judges according to each man's work, conduct yourselves in fear during the time of your stay upon this earth, knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your feudal way of life, inherited from your forefathers, but with the precious blood as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. For he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but has appeared in these last times for the sake of you who 
Through him are believers in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Since you have in obedience to the truth purified your souls for a sincere love of the brethren, fervently love one another from the heart. Five things I would suggest to you as you leave this place. Number one, Peter says, gird your minds for action. The image, of course, is someone pulling up, and you've perhaps understood this image better today. Some of you tried to navigate those stairs out there, particularly you men who are not, men who are not used to robes, that you may have had to hike them up a bit. You reached down, pulled them up, and in those days when they were going into battle, they'd take a girdle and gird up those, those robes and gird up the loins in preparation for battle. What he's talking about is a mental preparation that prepares one for the spiritual battle. In the last couple of years, I've had the privilege of taking one of the season games of the Dallas Cowboys and go over and do the devotional for them. The, the first year, it was on a Saturday or it was on a Sunday morning before they played in the afternoon. And as I walked into the room, the, the guy that invited me warned me. He said, they probably won't give you a lot of eye contact. He said, in fact, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. They've been in team meetings since 6 o'clock. The game is at 1 o'clock. But he said, they're going through their mental preparation. They're running routes and they're thinking about plays. Well, the truth was, he was exactly true because they were staring holes in the floor and you could see those wheels running and you could see that mental preparation. They had studied the opponent. They had studied their own moves. They had studied those game films all week. They had read those playbooks and now in mental preparedness, they were going over and over and over those details in their hearts and minds preparing for the gridiron and all for what a game that'll soon be passed records that'll soon be forgotten for very little but earthly reward the truth is you're girding up your minds for a spiritual battle that has eternity at stake what you've been called to will not always know the final score until we get to heaven so often the results of your ministry will not be obvious, will not be seen, but the Lord knows himself. And so I'm going to suggest to you that all of your ministry has got to be one of mental preparation. We have only been able in these few short years to teach you how to learn. This is a lifelong task. I challenge you to be an intentional learner, to stay mentally prepared throughout your ministry. Secondly, he says, keep sober in the spirit. This word sobriety is a popular one in this particular epistle. It seems to me to that idea of a spiritual balance. Balance is the key to so many things. It's the key to athletics, to dance, to music. So many of the things as we keep that balance is so easy for us to get out of balance, that we lose the balance spiritually in our life, balance of family and, and home responsibilities and church responsibilities and study and balance of relationship to the Lord. And so oftentimes you can be called out of this context, into that context of ministry, and all of a sudden, imperceptibly, you lose that sense of balance. Remember not long after I had moved to Norfolk, we were struggling with balance. The church was growing rapidly and and I had developed a messianic complex, which many preachers do. I thought they couldn't get along without me, and I loved it. One evening, as I was watching my girls grow up, one of the men from our church had come over for a cookout. His wife was critically ill in the hospital. They were Southwesterners. They had had to drop out during those last years because of her illness. And he was a bit upset with me that evening. He was upset because I had not spent as much time visiting his wife in the hospital as I ought to. And, and I knew that was true. I, I couldn't spend enough time. There wasn't enough time because of her illness and so many others. And I, I knew in my own mind, intellectually, that I would never have satisfied his request. And so I went on to talk about the fact with him that there were so many in our congregation who were ill and they were difficult. And, and I had to see them all. And and suddenly in the middle of that sentence, I knew that that didn't make any difference to him because it didn't matter how many were there, it was his wife who was there. And so he interrupted me and he said, I want to know who is more important than my wife. It happened at that time, my girls were in the yard tossing the frisbee. I looked down and I said, Fritz, they are. They are. That's my God-given responsibility. That balance which is so tenuous, that spiritual balance has to be maintained as you spend time on your knees with a holy God who alone can set the priorities for your ministry. 
Keep sober in the Spirit. Thirdly, set your hope. It's a beautiful word here. Fix your eyes. Keep your attention gathered on the hope of the grace to be received at the return of Christ Jesus. Now, over these past several years, I've listened to some of the same sermons that you have in chapel. It's been interesting. Many of them focused on the difficulties of ministry, and perhaps you needed to understand those things and needed to have those warnings. I know the statistics of plateaued and declining churches, just like you do, that perhaps two-thirds to more of the churches that you're going to be sent out to serve are either plateaued or declining now. And as I listen to some of those, I realize that it can be downright discouraging if you don't set your hope and set your eyes. Let me explain this. I, one, of the, one of the most difficult aspects of ministry is that for some reason they've scheduled the Super Bowl on Sunday night. Now, who did that? Did not ask my permission to do that. And, and so it always gets into one of those uh, arenas of integrity and, and the issue of scheduling there. Now, Fortunately, in the midst of the sovereignty of God, they developed VCRs that you could record that stuff. And it took pressure off a lot of us who were concerned about that. And the only problem you have is that you set that recorder, and if you're not careful, somebody will tell you the scope. I mean, you, you try to avoid deacons and others who are sitting out there listening with an with a earplug on. I mean, you, you've been there. You know what I mean. Well, one of the things that was interesting one year, and one of my, my team was in the midst of this thing, is that uh, inadvertently I, I heard the score. My family, my children didn't hear the score, and it was one of those games that seesawed back and forth, and, and it looked impossible. My team was almost impossibly behind. They couldn't catch up, but you know, I sat there and enjoyed that game that night. I mean, my girls were sweating bullets, and I just sat kind of cool and said, girls, look, just... Chill out. This is okay. Now, the reason I was so calm is that I knew the final score. I've got good news. We win. I know the final score. No matter what God places in your way, on the mission field, the music department, in the counseling room, as you do education or ministry, as you do evangelism across the world, no matter how difficult the soil may seem, no matter how difficult the times may be, oftentimes I want you to know that we win. Set your hope fully on the grace to be brought to you at the Lord Jesus Christ. Number four, verses 14 and 15 says, Be holy in all of your behavior. He's talking about obedience leading to holiness, to break out of the conformity to our ignorant lust. And he tells us why. He says, we must be holy because the God that we serve is holy and you bear his name as you move into ministry fields. Be holy. Most ministers do not lose their work or their calling or their tasks because of incompetence. Very few are asked to leave a church for those reasons, but many, unfortunately, will lose their task and their anointing because of unholiness, because they compromise in the area of character, in the area of holiness, because they do not understand that high calling to stand in relationship to a holy God who has called them to a holy task and that we must be pure in our character and our behavior because we have not been redeemed by anything futile like gold and silver, but by the precious blood, the Lamb of God. Finally, he says, love the brethren. Since you have in obedience to the truth purified your souls for a sincere love of the brethren, fervently love one another from the heart. You cannot lead those that you do not love. Sometimes I hear folks jokingly say, you know, the ministry would be a wonderful place if it wasn't for all these people in the church. Truth is, that's what makes it wonderful. Recalcitrant as they may sometimes appear to be, and the fact is we are that way ourselves with our Holy Father. And so he says, love the brethren, fervently love them. Some of the greatest advice ever given, unfortunately, that was not taken, is found in 2 Chronicles chapter 10. It is the time of the death of Solomon, the beginning of the reign of Rehoboam, and the scriptures oftentimes talk about it as being Rehoboam's reign of folly. You remember what happens. He calls in 
the counselors to his father. And he says, what would you have me do? Then King Rehoboam consulted with the elders who had served with his father Solomon while he was still alive, saying, how do you counsel me to answer this people? Listen to what he said, or they said. They spoke to him, saying, if you will be kind to these people, and please them, and speak good words or edifying words to them, they will be your servants forever. Incredible. Incredible advice. If you'll love these people, if you'll be kind to them, and if you will serve them, and if you'll speak good words to them, they'll serve with you. They'll link hands with you. And unfortunately, as you know, Rehoboam, wanted to assert his authority and said, they think my dad was tough. They haven't seen anything yet. I'm going to dictate and autocratically rule instead of coming with the context of that loving fervently the brethren. Let me encourage you, as God has called and commissioned you, that you would remember these things, that you would indeed focus on the principles of girding your mind. Keep mentally alert, spiritually alert. Stay in the Word of God. Keep your studies intact. Keep that balance and ministry. Set your hope. Know and understand the grace that is going to be brought to you by the Lord Jesus Christ and make sure that there is this holiness in relationship to a holy God. Fervently, fervently love the brethren you've been called to serve. We come now to the time that you've been waiting not just for this morning, but for several years. The conferring of the degrees, and the presentation of diplomas. I want to remind you that this is a worship experience for us, and I promise you that at the end of this time, we're going to have a time that all of us can celebrate with these graduates in an appropriate and a way together. And so I would remind you, as they ask at the beginning, that during the process of this, you not interrupt the proceedings with, with a, a splattering of applause here or there as your graduate walks across the stage. And I know some of you thought this would never happen, and you're about to burst. We'll let us all burst together in joy in a celebration time. So let me ask you to do that, that if you would remember that very special admonition to you. I recognize now Dr. Scotty Gray, Vice President for Academic Administration and Institutional Planning, who present the December 1998 graduation class. Mr. President, the faculty is pleased to present 285 individuals who have completed courses of study leading to degrees. I now present the following administrators who will present the class for graduation. Dr. David Fight, Director of Continuing Education. Dr. Benjamin Harlan, Dean of the School of Church Music. Dr. Darrell Eldridge, Dean of the School of Educational Ministries. And Dr. Tommy Lee, Dean of the School of Theology. The Director of Continuing Education and the Deans will now present the respective candidates for the certificates, diplomas, and graduate diplomas. Mr. President, the faculty of Southwestern Seminary present seven who have completed all of the requirements for the Certificate in Christian Studies, two who have completed the requirements for the Diploma in Ministry Training, and two who have completed the Certificate of Master Studies for lay persons. Mr. President, the faculty of the School of Church Music presents two who have completed all requirements leading to the degree graduate diploma in church music. Mr. President, the faculty of the School of Educational Ministries presents seven who have completed all requirements leading to the diploma in Christian education and seven leading to the graduate diploma in Christian education. Mr. President, the faculty of the School of Theology presents 10 who have completed all requirements for the degree Diploma in Theology and 12 who have completed all requirements for the degree Graduate Diploma in Theology. 
upon the completion of your prescribed courses of study, upon the recommendation of the faculty, the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the respective certificates and diplomas with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto wherever you may serve. Daniel E. Baker, Sr. Jose Del Bosque. Lino Castañeda. Noberto Prado. Juan Miguel Salierna. Jesse Serna. James Earl Sims. Taysen Ta. Jennifer E. Paris. Chui Lan Lee. Katrina McPherson. Andrew Dean Caperton. Yin Man Lee Choi. Jill Yvette Davis. Stephen Earl DeBoard. Gregory Wayne Gibson. Christopher J. Hunt. Scott O'Neill Lofton. Dennis E. Avanza. Johnny Joe Boudreau. R. Michael Ellerby. Danny Clyde Fleming. Kevin J. Fogarty. Richard L. Foster. William Jeter, Jr. Creston Owen Hewlett. Michael Dwayne McCoy. Ronald Byron Sanders. I congratulate you on the achievement which these certificates and diplomas represent. You may be seated. Mr. President, the deans will now present the candidates for the respective master's degrees. Mr. President, the faculty of the School of Church Music presents 18 who have completed all requirements leading to the degree Master of Music. Mr. President, the faculty of the School of Educational Ministries presents five who have completed all requirements leading to the Master of Arts in Church and Community Ministry, three Master of Arts in Communication, 23 Master of Arts in Marriage and Family Counseling, and 81 Master of Arts in Christian Education. Mr. President, the faculty of the School of Theology presents one who has completed all requirements for the degree MA in Missiology, three who have completed all requirements for the degree MA in Theology, 48 who have completed all requirements for the degree Master of Divinity, two who have completed all requirements for the degree 
Master of Divinity with church music, 64 who have completed all requirements for the degree Master of Divinity with Biblical Languages, and two who have completed all requirements for the degree Master of Theology. Upon the completion of your prescribed courses of study, upon the recommendation of this faculty and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the respective master's degrees with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto wherever you may serve. Lee Thomas Barnett, Michael Thomas Benoit, Jimmy Wayne Daniel, Wayne Vincent Evans Jr., David Todd Green, Gary Adrian Gordon, Brian Mark Hurry, Jeffrey Lyndall Jones, Hannah Kim, Bradley A. Martin, Kenneth Harold Martin, Todd Lewis Melton, Christine Elizabeth Allen Siebenman, Susan Elizabeth Sims, Stacy A. Stalls, Faith Annette Stone, Brian Michael Teague, Joseph D. Ziegler. Angela V. Benson, John Timothy Bowman, Rebecca Catherine Harrelson, Melanie Ranala Pilant, Jennifer Lee Smith, Kathy Ann Bolin. Daryl Chad McConnell, Robert William Reese, Brian M. Anderson, Jennifer Lynn Barlow, C. Jeffrey Bice, Kamel Dean Shane Kassam. Lee Ann Cole, Esther R. Dietz, B. Scott Eager, Dewin Milo John Ferguson, Kenneth Lee Griffin, Gay McCombs Hughes, William E. Jones, Margaret Elaine Curlin, Karen McDaniel, Donna Buchanan Moncrief, James R. Myers, Aaron A. New, April Langford Price, Regina Lynn Robertson, Dale E. Shalls, John Allison Turner, Paula S. Adams, Ahmed Gamal Aquino, 
Jenny Ann Boyd, Peter Lauren Brooks, Eddins Christopher Bergen, Philip Jefferson Casper, Bruce Edward Chowning, Jody Ray Clear, Tracy Wayne Cleveland, Richard Theodore Colson, Dwayne Coles Cottrell, Stephanie Raylene Crumpton, Stephen A. Dees, Russell Chester Drury, Gerald Allen Fannin, Jr., Mary Janine Foos, Wallace Andrew Futch, Jana K. Grimsley, Carla Melody Gunn, Buddy L. Hall, Cynthia Don Heil, Elizabeth Ann James, Paul Griffin Jones III, Tabitha K. Knight, Philip Jean Lalande, John Irvin Lawrence, Brent Curtis Lightsey, Carrie Reese Mackey, Stephanie Amelia Michonne, John Arthur McGinn, Amy Diane McMullen, Mitchell Lee Messersmith, Christopher Tony Miller, Hope Don Miller, Byron Arnold Mills, Troy D. Moore, Lamar Shea Murray, Tracy D. Robertson, Nikki J. Robison, Ronald M. Robison, James Skipper Rogers, Jeannie Shim, Jerry W. Stores, Gary Paul Taylor, Ryan Douglas Tyler, Lisa Michelle Watson, James Kevin Welch, Gerald L. Welch, Jr., Terry Lynn Williams, Sherry Lynn Wyman, John David Yates, Roberto V. Diaz, Dennis James Hester, John S. Lee, Thomas W. Rowe, Lance Brendan Albritton, Stephen Mark Alsop, Howard Anderson, Suzanne C. Batchelor, Marshall Neil Barnett, Christy Lee Carley, Christopher Dale Carlson, Raymond Cherry, Jr. 
Pamela Elizabeth Coglin, Nika Lawan Davis, Brian Allen Eason, James Edward Irwin, Baxter C. Falk, Joshua Garcia, Robert Lamar Green, Russell Gunther, Christian Chris David Hall, Paul Edward Humphrey, Christopher Neil Irvin, Vilma Tebshirani Caliph, Danya Deshane Kirby, Gregory D. Luttrell, Albert L. May, Brian Michael Mayfield, Kevin Mark McCurdy, Richard Boyd Murray, Natalie Ruth Nobles, June Soup Park, David Brian Paris, Beverly D. Paris, Kevin Monray Perrigan, Brett Jeffrey Porter, Stephen Gregory Pulley, Morgan Earl Pilot, Daniel Lee Robinson, Derek Henry Schoenhoff, James Edmund Smith, Timothy Scott Stewart, John Anthony Sursa, Frank Lee Thomas, William David West, Mark Wesley Williams, Miyun Hun Han, Tatsuichi Mujino, Morris Dwayne Adams, Russell Carson Atwood, Timothy L. Bagwell, Jerry Wayne Barnwell, James L. Bartlett, Dwayne Mark Bennett, Mark Douglas Bethune, Stephen Hilton Bowen, Alan Keith Brooks, Dwight Cecil Buckholz, Morgan M. Bush, Phil Chen Ping Tiong, Jeong Choi, Gary Thomas Clark, Timothy T. Dietrich, Joseph William Doughty, Jr., Charles O. Fisher, Linda S. Gray, Jamie Dwayne Greening, John Edward Hall IV, Danny Thomas Havard, Wei Pio Hong, William Xing Wei Huang, Jeff Wayne Hutchison, 
David Lee Jacks, Sherwood W. Janice, Kenneth A. Johnson, Stephen L. Johnston, Stephen Wayne Jones, Jennings Byron Kelly, Jr., Troy W. Knight, Seung Hyun Lee, Elme Brelas Lesa, Michael J. Leverage, Paul Lim, Herman MacDonald Malpas III, Mark Anthony McDaniel, Richard James McFeeters, Jr., K. Allen Miller, Seek One Moon, Parrish C. Myers, Richard Paul Nelson, Richard Mark Oe, Jung Han Park, Robert Dawson Parrott, Roger D. Patterson, David Graham Petter, Jane Maureen Gouge Reese, Scott Price Russell, J.D. Sanders, David A. Steen, Mark E. Stinson, Kenneth R. Thomas, Jr., Tony Lynn Thornton, Samuel Sung Ki To, Charles Trimble, Kevin M. Eckert, John M. West III, Terry Glenn Wilbanks, Keith Allen Walford, Clark Edward Rayther, Stephen James Zachary, Andrew Jones. I congratulate you all on the achievements which these master's degree represent. May God give you fruitful ministry. You may be seated. Mr. President, the deans now present the candidates for the respective doctor's degrees. <clears throat> Mr. President, the faculty at the School of Church Music presents three who have completed all requirements leading to the degree Doctor of Musical Arts, and one who has completed all requirements leading to the degree Doctor of Philosophy. Mr. President, the faculty of the School of Educational Ministries present six who have completed all requirements leading to the degree Doctor of Philosophy. Mr. President, the faculty of the School of Theology presents six who have completed all requirements for the degree Doctor of Ministry and nine who have completed all requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy. Upon the completion of your prescribed courses of study, upon the recommendation of this faculty and the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby 
confer upon you the respective doctor's degrees with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto wherever you may serve. John Linder Hansen. Dr. Hansen is pastor, Riverside Baptist Church, Fort Worth, Texas. Jesse R. Lyles. Dr. Lyles is pastor of First Baptist Church, Silver City, New Mexico. Forrest Eugene Pollock. Dr. Pollock is pastor is Truman Baptist Church, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Tracy Bennett Watson. <laughs> Dr. Watson is pastor First Baptist Church, Hamlin, Texas. Philip Martin Young. Dr. Young is pastor University Hills Baptist Church, Charlotte, North Carolina. Martin Ging Sai Chin. <clears throat> Dr. Chin is Minister of Music. First Baptist Church, Cupertino, California, and serves on the adjunct faculty of Golden Gate Baptist Theological Seminary, Mill Valley, California. Mary Ann Fritz. Dr. Fritz is adjunct professor of piano, Dallas Baptist University, and adjunct professor of music education, Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. Thomas Lamar Rowell. Dr. Rowell is visiting Assistant Professor of Voice, Hardin-Simmons University, Abilene, Texas. Kenneth Allen Pulls.
Dr. Pulls is adjunct professor of guitar and church music, teaching at both Dallas Baptist University and Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. Henry Albert Arnold. Dr. Arnold serves as a licensed professional counselor at the Family Counseling and Wellness Center in Bedford, Texas. Mark Eldon Busher. Dr. Busher is the Associate Pastor of Education and Youth at St. Mark's United Methodist Church in Cleburne, Texas. Robert Cesar de Vargas. Dr. de Vargas serves as assistant professor in the Foundations of Education Communications Departments in the School of Educational Ministries here at Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. Paul Ray Dorsey, Jr. Dr. Dorsey is the Minister of Education and Administration at Calvary Baptist Church in Garland, Texas. Juan Carlos Garcia. Dr. Garcia is returning to his home in Peru, where he will serve in the field of educational ministry. Dr. Garcia is the first from Peru to graduate in Southwestern. Yeah. Stephen Albert Howard. Dr. Howard is a professional counselor at Identity Counseling in Fort Worth. Robert David Blackaby. Dr. Blackaby is Pastor Trinity Baptist Church, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Howell Walker Burkhead. Dr. Burkhead is pastor of First Baptist Church, Cleveland, Texas. Sammy Kevin Doherty. Dr. Doherty is pastor of Central Baptist Church, Mineral Springs, Arkansas. Daniel 
Alan Dirks. Dr. Dirks is a missionary to Brazil with the International Mission Board. Travis Richard Freeman, Sr. Dr. Freeman is Assistant Professor of Old Testament, Florida Baptist Theological College, Graceful, Florida. Bobby J. Kelly. Dr. Kelly is Assistant Professor of Religion, Oklahoma Baptist University, Shawnee, Oklahoma. Durward Kyle Richardson, Jr. Dr. Richardson is a business lending officer, Bank of America in Irving, Texas, and also treasurer and financial consultant for North Metroplex Baptist Church. William Mark Wagner. Dr. Wagner is a church planting consultant and teacher at the International Center for World Missions and Bible School Bonn in Bonn, Germany. Curtis Edward Watke. Dr. Watke is Professor of Evangelism and Church Planting, Prairie Bible College and Graduate School, Alberta, Canada. I want to congratulate you for the discipline of study which has Come to fruition of these degrees. You may be seated. Would you like to join us now in expressing gratitude to the Lord and to these together this morning? and we're going to sing the seminary hymn, Remain Standing, for the remainder of the program. The prayer of commissioning will be led by Dr. Bill Toller, special consultant to the president, distinguished professor of biblical backgrounds, former vice, Pre vice president emeritus for academic affairs and provost of Southwestern Seminary as we come to sing.
Dr. Robert Naylor, our President Emeritus, is not well today. It was his desire to come and share in this commissioning as he has done for so many of our graduating classes for these many years. Most of you were probably present on that first day of chapel, your entering semester, and heard Dr. Naylor commission you that you are now Southwesterners. Bear the name well, for many have walked ahead of you, have paid the price with broken hearts, and even sometimes being killed on mission fields because of the dedication of the kingdom of our Lord. I cannot come in the same sense that Dr. Naylor, for he has been associated with this institution since his graduation in 1933, 65 years of dedicated service. But I'll come with 47 years of commitment to this institution and to higher education for you. And so I'm honored to be asked by Dr. Hemphill to come and take in a brief moment this place that Dr. Naylor chairs so much and has filled so well. Our prayers go with Dr. Naylor and Ms. Naylor, both of whom find their health failing in these years as they are now nearing their 90th birthday. So we pray for them and remember them on this special occasion. I will simply share with you, as Dr. Nader would had he been here, one verse of scripture, John 20, 21. It was on Sunday evening of that first Easter. Our Lord had made four appearances previously that day. To Mary Magdalene first, to a group of women that afternoon to the two men on the road to Emmaus and to Simon Peter, and then for his fifth resurrection appearance, he met with a group of his apostles in that room that night, having locked the doors for fear of those who might persecute them. And twice our Lord said to them, Peace be with you. After the second peace will be with you, he said, As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. The word commission means literally to go with. It's a time of commitment, of dedication. It's a time in which we renew our call to him. So as you go forth from this institution, bearing the name of Christ most of all, but also the name of Southwestern, I would simply challenge you, as Dr. Naylor would, to bear it well. The world in its darkness needs to see his glorious light. He has touched your life. Now you join with more than 60,000 of us who have come this way and studied in this institution for these 90 years of our history to share with the world, to let them know there is hope in the midst of hopelessness, there is light in the midst of darkness. Hold high his cross and his word. May we bow together as we pray. And our Father, to the extent that we can, with mortal minds and human hearts and with sincerity of attitude, we commit these, our fellow Southwesterners, to your keeping, to your use, and our Father, to your service, that through them, you would speak a word of hope and salvation to a world that needs it so desperately. Guard them carefully. Help them to apply the words of wisdom that they have heard, exercise the disciplines they have learned, and to apply the message our president has given to them this day. And now we commit ourselves to join with them as they go. And therefore, in this commissioning service, we join with them in going into the world that all the world might have the hope for which our Savior came. And at this Christmas season especially, now less than two weeks away, we pray that you would help us to remember why you sent your son into the world, and may we go with him as he's commissioned us. For this is our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.